Hello and happy holidays to everybody. We are coming again this afternoon to answer some of the questions that came on our feed on our YouTube channel, Justina Thompson's Mortgage Board channel, um, during our uh, live discussion and recording um, on the conflict resolution and repatriation, uh, the discussion that we had. And so uh, we had some questions and so I thought that my husband should uh, address some of the questions that was, um, you know, placed uh, towards us. So honey, you want okay. to start off? Yes, I'll start. I want to say good afternoon. It's a beautiful Tuesday evening. Uh, I want to start off with answering the question of my beautiful sister-in-law. Uh, there's no definite decision has been made, but I'll read the question. The first question is, so first step is figuring out why is the hesitation and will he truly be comfortable making another country's home? Well, I can answer that kind of pretty thoroughly. Uh, like I mentioned before, 30 years ago, I was in the Philippines for four years, close to four years. And um, basically, you know, um, yeah, a lot of the amenities that we have here, as I stated before, aren't there. So the hesitation is for me to go back this summer and review some of the things that uh, I have questions with. And basics, uh, you know, as far as the water uh, situation there, um, water sewage, those types of things I'm not used to dealing with on a daily basis. You know, um, in the Philippines, I was in the military, so I had to live off the local economy in certain ways. You had to go get water and different things uh, on the from the military base where I had, I had access to water, clean water. Now, there, I'm not sure about gaming because I wasn't there long to see how the systems work. The sanitation system and that the hesitation is will these will these things be available to me and my family me and my wife if I go back so going back will allow me to check things out more thoroughly than uh, when I went the last time okay and that's what hesitation is um the banking systems I didn't really it wasn't too bad so I don't know I'm not sure. I want to be sure how, to, how the access to my money, access to my business back here will be able. Will I be able to access it immediately, or is there hesitation? And uh, that's important to me because it's too far away to be uh, having problems uh, over there and having to communicate back and forth and. Get things are slower, and I uh, like on that too. A lot of, over there, things are a lot slower than here, so you have to have patience, you know, um, and every and just about everything you do, you know, transportation, everything, everything's a lot slower. So it's an adjustment, and where my wife, she hasn't gone through that, as opposed to being there every day, going there for two weeks or ten days, and then she's back here in the states. But if you have to deal with these things every day, uh, like I told her, you know, you may not want to, you may not want to deal with them, you know. And these are things that she has to look at for her own, for her own good because she's busy those 10, week, 10 days to two, to two weeks constantly going back and forth to the village. So her day is consumed entirely with the village. Or maybe a little bit of run to talk to the government about this. But other than that, she has not experienced, as I have experienced, the day-to-day -day things that you may have to have a question about that where there needs to be some improvement. So going back for the second time will allow, will help in my decision making as well because I'll be able to look at a lot of things as opposed to very little the first time because my intention on the first trip was to support a wife in her uh, mission. You know, was nothing done Except for I went to a few markets to buy the food and stuff. 
which I've said before. I've experienced that in the Philippines for almost four years. So that was, wasn't a big deal. Okay. I'm hoping that will answer the question. So going back would be uh, a final, uh, my final decision will be based once I go back, check things out, and, and verify the couple of things that are that's important to me. Because what's important to her may not be, what's important to me may not be important to her. Or what's important to me, she may have, maybe she didn't even think about it at the time. Even though she's been there for the last 16 years, there's things that she don't think about because she goes from her, her lodging to the village, like I said, to the village, to her, in the local city. And that's about it. She don't have to experience, she's experienced the brown house though, the black house, you know, but like I said, I've experienced that, you know, before. Okay. Let me interject. Okay, so Tony have not been since 2016, okay? Uh, I have been six, since 2016, okay? And I've been twice since 2016, okay? Um, and from 2016, from the time that he went with me, um, I went twice in that year. Okay, he went in April of 2016 right. along with me I, with Correct. my church de delegation. Yeah. And then I brought another smaller group in October in 2016. Okay, so, uh, and from that time, from April until October, um, it had started, um, it had started uh, from those couple months, people had started to come in uh, and it had gotten uh, a little busier then. In fact, we, we went in October. I had never been in October and one of my friends had shared with me that October was super hot and I didn't believe him. And oh my goodness, October is really hot. Okay, uh, so anyway, um, since then, there has been an exodus out of the United States, out of Canada, out of um, the Caribbean. I mean, I am so tickled pink, pleasingly happy with what is transpiring now because I'm telling you, from 2000 six up until right now uh i was begging people i'll say 2016 after i took my first two groups of people i was begging people me and my brother were begging people to go with us to experience this beautiful place uh this very welcoming welcoming people um this i mean unspoiled beaches, uh, inexpensive living. I mean, just laid back government. I mean, it's, man, it's, it's just beautiful. It's wonderful. And uh, so uh, we were begging and trying to tell them, trying to tell people, I was begging my husband, my family members, you know, because our, our family members are it's, it's gifted and we could just go over and open up businesses upon businesses and just do fantastic over there. But it's yet to be seen, guys. Uh, sometimes, you know, I'm not calling anybody stupid, but we can be stuck on stupid sometimes. Um, because it's just easy. You know, um, when I'm a business person, so entrepreneurship is not an easy thing, okay? Uh, you have to bootstrap a lot of times. You start and you're doing well, and then sometimes some things knock you down, and you got to get back up, and all this kind of stuff. And here in America, you guys already know how hard it is to get a business loan. Even if you have excellent credit, we can't get a business loan. I mean, you you have multimillionaires, billionaires. They tie the money up from them. So imagine a small business owners, you know trying to get along to, to, to move ahead and, you know, trying to get out in this market and, you know, expand your business and all of that. So, um, you know, it's super frustrating and super hard here. 
trying to, uh, to, to make things work and make things happen for you and your family. Um, but uh, there in the Gambia, oh my gosh, what I've ex ex experienced so far, it, it's, it's, it's like a cakewalk, you know, to me. Um, from especially from what I've gone through here in the States with trying to run a business, with trying to afford um, employees, with trying to afford um, the insurances that they, they put on you um, in order to even have employees so that your, your business can grow. Um, all these taxes and all this stuff. I mean, it's ridiculous. And so for me... Oh, okay. Well, I'm just, okay. So, uh, for me, it, it, it's, you know, it's a no brainer. Um, and so the, there is no hesitation for me. Um, so the, the, the questions basically would be geared towards my husband because again, when I did my first video, um, I st in 2006, when my feet hit the ground, when the plane landed, you know, I, I was home. My spirit, everything about being in the Gambia, touching the continent, it, it, you know, the African continent, I was through. I, in 2006, I was done with the U.S. You know, um, I, I wanted to bring my entire family over there then, and that's when my father was still living. I was trying to bring him over there so he could see you know, uh, his family members and all of that, that, that you know, where our, uh, our ancestry village was in the whole nine yards. So, um, you know, uh, again, we're a couple. We, I'm just, I'm waiting on, on my husband. Okay. Um, um, I think my husband would be comfortable, and I'll let him. I'm, I'm. This is my response, and then I'll let you respond. Okay, so will will he be comfortable? I think he'll be more than comfortable because he lives in the Philippines. My husband, um, you know, is a musician. He's a wonderful musician. He's a great teacher. Uh, he has very good patience. You know, um, he's a good leader, and um, so I think that. He loves children. So I think that he would be a blessing and an asset to the continent of Africa. Gambia would be, um, you know, great to have this man there on the continent. You know, uh, he's just a wonderful giving person. And I think that, um, you know, he would just be an asset. And us coming together, I believe that we could really do a great work and service there. Although he wants to retire and don't want to do nothing. He just want to kick his heels up and ride a motorcycle, which would be fine too. That's another business for me uh, to do some uh, motorcycle tours, whatever. But anyway, uh, so honey, the question right. is, uh, you know, are you truly going to be comfortable there? Okay. From, from the perspective of comfortable, like I said, if I look at it as a really comfortable, I would have to say not really because they don't have a military, but from what I see, I've seen my experience there for ten days. I really didn't see a problem there, unless there's, there's an uprising or something like that. But from day to day, uh, from day to day activities, I, I don't see a problem that could arise. You know, um, you know, you do a lot of different things here, different. Uh, I mean, diversity, racial diversity, a lot of stuff here going on right now as we speak. Uh, tensions are high, but like I say, the only tensions were that I noticed, they were noticeable to me, was during, during an, an election. The election, that was it. But as far as day to day, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really see any problem. But what has my concern is the little military that they have is, not, is no threat to no one. And I, my belief is, if you don't have a strong military, you don't have a strong uh, government, a strong co country, to where someone from the outside, a border country, say they want to uh, just take over, or maybe there's a coup in the. I don't see where they can really 
handle something like that. And that can happen at any time. Like I stated in there, I think two videos before, I've seen two coups take over. Uh, two takeovers while, while I was stationed in the Philippines and it wasn't good. You feel helpless and I never wanted to be uh, in that situation again because as, as, my, as I stated to my wife, she's never really been overseas and experienced a lot of things that I've experienced. Now, during the coup, remind you, there were two. We could not leave our house. We had the, the American military around a, a compound where I stayed. We had to appoint people to go to the base. Now, I had base support because I because I was a military member. But now, if something happened, a coup there, just I'm just I'm just speaking because my wife, she's always it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. But I think different. It can happen. So who's going to protect you? Who's going to go? If you can't leave your house, who's going to go get food? These are the things that men that I look at. I'm not gonna say just men, but women too. There's I wouldn't been in the military. And a lot of them been overseas. It's different. I don't look at everything as the way she looks at things. We're two people, so when she looks, thinks everything is going to be all sweet and, 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 and nice every day, I don't think of it because I've seen a day turn from peaceful, everybody having fun, to a coup. And a coup to me is a quick takeover. If you're stuck in the street, you got to stay wherever you are. You can't come home. Fortunately, when it happened to me in the Philippines, I I was home. And she's having, she hasn't experienced anything like that. You know, and if something like that were to happen, she has to think about what would she do? Because if she gets stuck, say in the village, okay, you have to stay, you have to stay where you are. And I would never say nothing would happen because without a strong military, you have no control. You have uh no way of protecting your people. Now we have the US military now. How, my question always was to her, who's going to protect us, being American, in a foreign country? We are not military. We don't work for the Department of uh, Defense or anything like that. And the embassy, how, we can, how can we make it to the embassy? We don't, you know, these are things what, that, that I have questions about. And that's why I say I'm going back. I have a checklist that I'm going to use to, to see what, what they have, what they don't have, and what they need to improve. Because... If you come from a country, say, here, you don't have that problem because they have a, a guard, a reserve. Those guys over there, you know, it, it's really no, it's not even, it's not enough of them for number one, I mean, to do too much. You know, I think a couple guys from the street can just go and, go and do what they want to do if they really wanted to. And what? And who's going to stop them? You know, or say a, a larger country in Africa wanted to, hey, they see resources in Gambia. We want to take it. We want to take Gambia. We, we want to do this. There's no threat. By having a uh, uh, military, you 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 you, you uh, sort of, you know, you have some kind of a threat. You got to have a threat where they, they, someone won't take a chance or think about doing it, you know. So no, that, that's why I said I'm going back uh, to check these things out, you know. I go, on, I go to the military uh People to see what how what, what they do. I would question them. What would you do for pay, for uh, foreigners if something happens? I want to know because this is my wife. Now, if I don't decide to stay here, she stay. She she's gonna be there. I'm gonna be here, which I don't want to happen. That's why I, I want you know I don't want I, or either she spends six months there, six months here. We'll figure it out. So it's not it's no decision made yet about we're gonna be staying there the whole time or not. You know, but these are the things I want to know if, if we're together. And especially if my wife is there by herself. So I have to go to the embassy and see what video protocol on, on that. You know, because I, I mean, you have to pose some kind of threat to the, to the outside some kind of way. And if your military is not strong, you don't, you don't, you don't pose a threat. So they feel like they can just take over. And I, and I don't feel like they can at this point. So now, so the question was, will I be comfortable in Gambia? From what I've seen, no. I wouldn't. For myself, especially not for my wife. Now, moving on, what would I be doing there? Okay, um, it would be a wonderful place if I went. I said before in my other video, I wouldn't be doing anything, and I really don't want to. I just want. To, I mean, I'm not gonna just uh, do nothing, but uh, 
on an average day, I'll, I'll probably do, be doing something musically because, I, like I said, I don't see too much going on as far as me. There are bands, there are a few little places to play, but it's a, it's the, honestly, it's the perfect place to really have have something music, something big, because they have the space. They have a, like a coliseum. The whole time I was there, it was for soccer, but they could have concerts there. I mean, really huge concerts. There's a place over there called Hyperlink. It's a resort. It was perfect. It'd be like uh, what's, what's that? Coco what was that? Ocean. Coco Ocean, the beach. What 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 was it called out there when you go? Whoop Trap? Oh, not Whoop Trap. What is it? What they have a concert? Uh, Whoop Trap. Whoop Trap. They have a place called Hyperlink. It's similar to Whoop Trap, but it's really nice. Has a pool, pools. It has a a nice stage, like the uh, theater type on outside, which you can have. And everybody, the temperature is warm all the time. You can have concerts like every other weekend or every weekend. Because you may get rain, but as far as uh, the cold, you can have it year round. So I, I would probably do something like that. I mean, not necessarily not necessarily play, but you know, try to work with the locals to see if they're willing to, to work with me as far as concerts. I would probably do a gospel concert. Right now, that's all prospects. I mean, I thought about it. And I mentioned it to my wife, you know, when I got back. But, like, gospel concerts, you know, or mix them up uh, with other genres, you know, R&B, whatever, you know. Or, or or just have, like, a... The church was to be the perfect spot for churches to have, like, like getaway conventions or, or just a, a, like a, like a um, marriage retreat. It will be the perfect idea. And stuff like that, but how how does the uh, the locals feel about you know you have to have build a, like a relationship with them first, you know that's what you have to be. But it'd be the perfect spot for that, and uh, especially the beach. The beach would be dynamic, like in Brazil they have like the Rolling Stones and all those groups on the beaches, and uh, you know it'd be thousands of people, you know. They don't have thousands of people there. It's just like nobody on a, on a beach. Uh, t t tell me, ten miles or whatever, maybe longer than that. There's no one there. No one. Except on Sunday. You know, except Sunday. Like she said, I didn't see it, but I went. But she saw it. But those are some of the things that, that possibly that I could do to keep me busy. Like I said, I want to get my motorcycle and ride because it's perfect for that. It's wide open. I get a bike and a dirt bike. There's plenty plenty of space to ride a dirt bike. And it's, it's, it's a lot of opportunity for you to do a lot of things. The thing of it is, is, is it'll take quite a bit and, and some working. It, it'll take some work, working on the infrastructure, working on all these things to get the roads right. You can even have like a, you can almost build something like a carnival there. You have this, it's a lot of space for stuff like that. Well, now that we have uh, the expats, uh, they're coming in by the droves, y'all. Every day I'm looking at, a lot of the YouTuber channels that's over in the Gambia, man, and man, I mean, the people, are, I, it is fantastic news for me um, as a business owner that, um, you know, that we're coming over there with our dollars, and that, that is fantastic news for me. So, you know, because I'm, again, uh, I, I'm retired here in the States, a retired cosmetologist, but I still have my license. And I also am licensed caterer. So, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm already registered as uh, an NGO over in uh, the Gambia. And I'm also a 501c3 here. So uh, I have business set up already um, there. So um, my thing is, is just, again, you know, I, I'm just like biding my time, you know, waiting for my name so um so yeah so baby read the next question okay what would i okay i, I covered what would i be doing so that I, you know you know like i said concerts retreats conventions it's, it's all and if, if i decide to go these are the type of things that that i uh entertain in my mind when i after i went you know five years ago just about okay the next question it says, will making the move make the wife happy while your husband is silently looking for a place of peace, 
quiet and enjoying his retirement. Okay. Um, I'm sure it'll make her happy if if if, if we both if I if I move there. But like I said, I will be looking at things when I go back. The computer will make me be happy from day to day. You know, because I didn't get a chance to really look at um everything. Because I wasn't I I didn't have a chance, I didn't have time to. Uh, I was busy every day doing something to su in support of the mission. So I'm sure she's happy. Every time she goes and come back, she's she's happy. But like I said, I I I can't say because uh, it's peaceful there and it's quiet. And it's, and I could really enjoy my retirement as long as I can, you know, do some of the things that um that I'm used to doing. But like I said, I'm not sure how to, you know, I like sports and all that stuff, but I didn't have a chance to see it. How the uh, internet, I mean, not the internet, but the cable system. A lot of people don't check it out. So, um, we both have, to, if, if we're apart, it's not going to be too happy. So, the thing about it is, we have to, we have to really weigh things out when I go and come back. These questions that, that my sister might ask, I really won't be able to answer when I go back. And that is not the point, I don't, I don't want people to think that I'm, I'm holding my wife hostage and, and or she may make it seem like that. But I have to, in order to make a decision for myself, truly be a man, but she has it going on with me, in other words. I don't, because she feels the connection of the family. That, that, that drew her there. She has a mission. She has several um, groups she's working with. She was her 501c. 501c3, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. she has several groups. I mean, I never... I never entertained, entertained like moving there, but I went, and I mean it's not it's not bad. I like it, and uh, but the question is, do I, would I like it enough to move there? And I can't answer that right now because I have not made the decision to move there yet. And she's thinking is that I'm um, she's waiting on me, but it's not really that. It's just I have to have the things that I love and do that's available to me. Because while she's in the mission doing her thing, you know, I don't have family over there. She has family support in the village. I have no connection to anyone. She she has she has um even the local people know her by name, by first name basis. Mm -hmm. You see, she's been there been going that long. Some people see her and say they know her and haven't seen her. When did you get back? You know, you see people in the street asking about her and talking to her. So she has that kind of relationship. Well, I, I didn't have a chance to meet. I mean, I mean, I can. I met a handful of people, basically, you know. But we will see after I make the next trip. So, um, I can't say it's gonna make me happy. But my wife is happy now. Just the thought of her um, going back, she's happy. But I'm, I'm, I can't be. I'm not. I don't have the same feel right now as that. I gotta feel it, and I'm not feeling it so. I didn't because I didn't have a chance to really observe everything I need to observe as a as a man, you know, you know. So that's the question. That I hope, I'm hoping that answers the question because, like I say, I can't I can't say it's not peaceful because it's very peaceful, peace and quiet, very, and it's and it really is the perfect setup for somebody to retire. But I don't like I said I'm not gonna say do nothing, you know. I'll never just sit around. And do nothing, you know. But I do want to enjoy what's left of my life, you know. And I, I don't want to go anywhere where I'm not going to enjoy it and be happy within myself, you know. Some things, you know. I mean, uh, some some things that I like, she don't like. Some things I like, she don't. You know, vice versa. But the main thing you have to have contentment, contentment, contentment within yourself with whatever you do. It's not like pulling the trigger. My wife used the term pulling Pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. Well, guess what? It, it, well, you've already pulled the trigger 15 years ago. But I can't <laughs> say that for myself. You know. So I want to understand it, you know. That uh, it's a major decision. It's, it's, and a lot of things I don't think she's checked out for herself. You know, she's just excited and her emotions are so high and 
But a lot of things she don't think about as far as her living here. When she go visit, she knows she's coming back. You know. And like I said, she haven't experienced uh miss not seeing her family when she want. Or, you know, something happened. Happened, you can't just jump on a plane and go, you might wait two days before you can even get a plane. You know. I mean, guys, there are surrounded countries. Okay, so if we're Gambia is surrounded by Senegal, which has a bigger hub, a bigger airport, okay? So we'll be able to get um a a uh, a flight out of Senegal if we can't get one out of Gambia. Uh we just have to, you know, take a car ride. Uh you have you have Mali on top of Gambia. Um, below Gambia is uh, uh, Guinea, and um, and then um, or you could get a flight to Spain is right on top. So you could fly, you know, we could to catch catch a, a flight to to Spain and then go to the U.S. or wherever we need to go. Oh, right there. Yeah. With this pandemic, you ain't flying nowhere right now. So you, you got to calm down. <laughs> I think she sort of forgot what's really happening. Well, now the pandemic has changed a lot of things. Uh, I would already have been there and back and get ready to go again uh, had it been, not been for this pandemic. Uh, but um, I'm going, I plan on going in March. So uh, I'm preparing now to get ready to go and it's interesting because uh, right now they, they're talking about the UK uh, closing down the borders and them mm -hmm. not traveling it, so they're it, um, uh, putting travel restrictions in place again so I'm waiting to hear I haven't listened to the news today so uh, to see what the US is doing that they don't want the British to be traveling and stuff like that so I guess the borders are getting ready to get closed again so, this has been going on all year long. I thought I was going to travel to Gambia the early part of the year. And, then, you know, with these travel restrictions and stuff like that, I just decided to just stay put. Um, I was hoping that March was going to be better. But now they're talking about the count spiking up and then another different strand. Kind of, I'm like, oh, Lord, Jesus. So, um, so yeah. It, it, but I see... My younger um, brothers and sisters, like, forget that, and they gone. So, and man, that is such an encouragement for me. So, like, shout out to y'all. And, um, you know, I, um, you know, <sighs> you know, have a condition, and so I have to be careful. So, that's why... Uh, I'm still sitting here. Otherwise, I would be over there already. Enjoying that freedom that I'm seeing and watching you all on uh, on YouTube. And anyway, uh, so with that being said, you know, hopefully in the next couple months, you know, I'll have my ticket and I'm on the plane and on my way over there. And telling my husband he better come on and enjoy the land of milk and honey. And, uh, you know, hopefully we will be packing up our house next year. So, um, you know, I think that was that. That was the only question. Uh, did you answer the retirement place piece? Retirement. Okay. All right. So. I think that's all we have to do. We're going to upload this video so that uh, anybody um, that has any more questions that they want to ask us as we prepare to, um, you know, make our decisions and stuff about repatriation or whether or not we're going to share both, con live on both continents, um, you know, with um, be here six months, there six months, or how are we going to do it? Um, like, subscribe, like, subscribe, and and uh, share. Um, 
follow us as we uh, make our decisions and follow us with our, with our uh, journey to repatriation or not. Okay, it's the Mortgage Bull channel. All right. Okay. Hope this will help anyone else kind of uh, move abroad or, you know, hopefully some of the things, some of the points that we mentioned, you may be to, you know, talk about. Yeah. Okay. All right.